Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Today I'm working on a pair of faulty PS2 Slims. Both units aren't reading discs. One of the systems has an intact warranty sticker, and both are the same 75001 model. Both have surface scratches and scuff marks, and someone's attempted to repair this unit right here, made clear by the fact that there's electrical tape where all the plastic screw covers are meant to be. I'm gonna work on these as a pair since they have the same symptoms, and so you guys don't get confused when I go back and forth between them. Anytime you see them on screen together, the one with an intact warranty seal is gonna be on the left, and the one that's been previously worked on is gonna be on the right. So here I am hooking up the Virgin PS2 to my capture card. I'm using the cleanest game disc that I have to eliminate any potential problems caused by a scratched up or dirty disc. We don't have any audio or video issues here, the unit starts up just fine. But the optical drive shows no signs of life whatsoever. I can't hear any sounds indicating that the laser is moving or the disc is trying to spin up. It just appears completely dead. And we'll just call this guy the Dirty PS2. This is the unit where there's signs of a previous repair attempt. This guy powers up as well. We're getting both audio and video. but seems to have the same symptoms when a disc is inserted. It doesn't sound like the disc is trying to spin up or that the laser is moving. It just looks to be completely dead. Nothing left to do but open these guys up and take a look inside. I decided to start with the dirty PS2. Given it's got mismatched screws, it's missing all the screw covers, I might as well learn my way around the PS2 on this unit. That way, if I happen to make things worse, I'm not going to be too broken up about it. When disconnecting the ribbon cable for the power switch board, the pull tab fell off, but it looks like the pins are intact, so I should be able to glue that back on. And I'll come back to check on the saved battery later. Right now, I'm just focused on figuring out what's going on with the optical drive. Now, I have downloaded a service manual for this system to help me out, and my first thought is to check all the fuses. There's 14 fuses on this system, and several could be responsible for circuitry that communicates with the optical drive, so it makes sense to quickly check them and eliminate that as a potential cause. The fuses are on the back of the motherboard, so you have to do a full teardown and remove the lower shield if you want to access those fuses on the back. Alright, multimeter is in continuity mode, and I'm just going to go through the fuses in alphabetical order. This is the main power fuse by the way, if your unit wasn't turning on, that would be the one to check. A bunch of these fuses are clustered together, here for example you can see 1 and 7 right next to each other, but for the sake of being thorough, I like going in alphabetical order, that way I'm sure that I don't forget to check one by mistake. And if you're curious, you can always check the service manual to see what each of these fuses are responsible for, or you can just check all of them like I'm doing here. All my fuses turned out to be good, so now I shift my attention to the lid sensor. There's two lid sensors on the PS2 Slim, and their job is to let the system know when the lid is open or closed. And this switch looks like it's doing its job. This whole time I thought I was recording and I wasn't. But let me show you guys what I found. I've been messing with this thing for about a minute. And it's kind of inconsistent. It's like got a, a dead spot. There. I did already push it in like 20, 30 times. So maybe I loosened up some dirt that was in there. I think messing with it made it better. I think this is the problem. 
so that front lid sensor looks to be a likely culprit. I'm going to shower both of those switches with some contact cleaner and reassemble the system and test it out. And let's quickly glue the pull tab that fell off the power switch board ribbon cable. It wasn't even moving before. Nice. Guess I should test the video. See if it's at least booting. All right, turned on my capture card. It's working. This turned out to be awesome guys. The problem looked like it was just that front door lid sensor. And not only was the drive spinning, it was booting up into the game. It looked like I was done with this unit and I was gearing up to work on the next one. But towards the end, before the final reassembly, I realized there was more going on with this unit and I had to take another look. And it looks like the saved battery is dead, so I'm gonna have to swap that out too. All right, it's time for the Virgin PS2. And 15 years after it was released, someone finally popped that cherry. And this time around, I'm not gonna do a full teardown to check the fuses. The very first thing I wanna check are the two lid sensors. I press them both down, nothing seems to be happening, but only after a couple of tries, the drive is already showing signs of life. It's the exact same issue. It's the exact same issue. That's hilarious. What are the odds of that? Well, let's plug it into video and see if it's actually outputting an image. This to me is just bad design or low quality materials, but I can't say I'm surprised. And this is why I love repairing stuff. You'd think you'd need to have an engineering degree to figure this out, but nine times out of 10, it's a blown fuse or a broken power connector, or in this case, a mechanical issue with the switch. And it certainly is. Okay. So if you did not want to remove your warranty sticker, you want to spray some contact cleaner or at the very minimum, some rubbing alcohol on this switch, the door sensor and the door sensor back here. So if the case is on, you kind of have to shower this little hole right here. And you would think it's kind of this thing that's going down to press on something, but it's actually this latch. This is the latch that depresses that button. So you have to shower some contact cleaner or rubbing alcohol back there and just kind of work the door up and down. So I'm not gonna do a full teardown on this unit, but I will take off and clean the fan, grease the rails, clean the laser, and check the safe battery. And of course, apply contact cleaner to the two switches. And I did all of this to the first unit, but there's no point showing you the same footage twice. I've also removed some footage of just general dusting and cleaning. I'm gonna focus on the more important maintenance stuff. Some new lithium grease. Ninety-nine point nine percent IPA for the laser. Very gently. And some contact cleaner. Let's see how that battery's doing. Hmm. It's dead. It's completely dead. All right, let's see about these batteries. Ooh. That's a nasty one. Now, I have a couple of different options. 
This one's meant for through hole connectors. And this one's surface mount. But which of these can I more easily connect to this existing wiring? Well, since I've done any soldering, this should be fun. So I decided to try the through hole connectors. I'm gonna try and bend them both so that they're pointing in the same direction. So let's try that. Okay, I'll push them down all the way once I solder the wire to it, but let's see how that works. Pull some wire. There we go. And use just a little bit of heat shrink tubing to clean everything up. Yep, I think that'll work. All right, let's tin the iron. I'm gonna turn this up to about maybe 350. I like it being hot when I'm working on batteries so that I can get in, get out without warming it up too much. I'm gonna do 360, and that's Celsius. And let's tin the tip. Get a little solder on there. Let's pre-tin these wires. All right, let's pretend this lead. Heat shrink. And in case it's not obvious, red is positive. I probably could have removed this casing before I started because I'm going to apply my own, but I'll just go ahead and remove it now. Now, I'm not going to go crazy with this. I don't want the battery to get hot, but let's just shrink it down a little bit. Let's check the voltage. Three volts. Perfect. Given these cables are a little thicker than the originals with the insulation, I'm going to try and sneak it underneath for a cleaner look. Nice. Is that gorgeous or what? I'm just going to repeat the process for the second battery. Looking good. All right, so I put down a little bit of tape to fasten the fans down the way that they were before, and I hooked everything up to test it all out before final reassembly. And what I found was the Virgin PS2 is working perfectly every time. The one that had been previously worked on is only reading discs half the time, even less than half the time. So when we tried it earlier, I think I just got lucky and it worked, but let me show you guys what I mean. All right, let's put a disc here and let me hit record on my capture card. Turn this thing on. Press the two switches. Straight away into the game. And that's the game menu. Okay, so let's unplug this from power. Turn this on, hold down the two switches. It 
spinning up. And it's still on the main menu. It hasn't started the game. I was hoping I could show you guys that it was intermittently working. I thought it was only kind of having problems half the time, but I've tried this about 10 times now and the game's still not starting. So I've seen this start twice, which is a good sign. Let's try and do a pot adjustment on this unit and see if that makes a difference. Now the good news is I have a working unit that I know has not been tampered with, so I can get some baseline values for the laser from this, this drive, and then we'll see what those values look like. This is my good drive. So here I have the multimeter on resistance mode. And there's two potentiometers on here, one on the top that says CD and one on the bottom that says DVD. And each potentiometer has three points, one on the top and two on the bottom. The resistance that we're going to measure is going to be across the two rails on the bottom. So let's do the DVD one first and get a reference point. One point zero four three kilo ohms. One point zero four three. And for the CD, point five two four. It's close enough. So now on the problematic one, let's see what the value is here. On the good one, it's one point zero four three. 0.693, wow. Someone's definitely messed with this before. Because when you lower the resistance, the idea is that you deliver more power to the laser. And this is not half, but I mean, two thirds of what it should be. It's almost 0 0.7, 0 0.69, and it should be 1.043. Let's see what this one looks like. 423. Well, let me change this, let me dial it up. And that's going to be counterclockwise, I believe. And we'll see if it makes any difference. I would like to see the reading as I'm changing it. So I'm going to try and go counterclockwise. It's very sensitive. I'm happy with that. 1.041, 1.042, and the other one was 1.043. And let's change the CD one as well. Four twenty three, and we're targeting about five twenty three. Five twenty three. I'm happy with that. Okay, let's put this drive back on the console and see if there's any difference. All right. Let's turn this on. Let's hit record. Let's hold the switches down. the game started up. Would you look at that? Awesome, 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 awesome. Let's wait for the in-game prompt about the memory card. There it is. Okay. I'm satisfied with that. Let me put these back together and we'll give them one final test. All right, guys, these have been washed. We are ready to start putting everything back together. I'm going to keep them original to their board, so I'm not going to mix and match. This is the unit that was previously worked on, and this is the one where we had to peel off the warranty sticker. This is meant for the vertical stand if you kind of like stand the PlayStation upright and it slides into the top case like that. Now, these are the proper case screws and these are the ones that came holding together the unit that was previously opened. So I'm not going to use any of these. Since I have six of these, I'm just going to use three and three until I come across another parts console and I can finish this one up completely. Now, you guys have seen me use this stuff before, but this is a plastic restore. It's meant for automotive use. 
So you use it on the faded plastic on your car and it replenishes the plastic with oils and it lasts for quite a while. Even in the beating sun, you only have to apply it like once a year. So we're gonna do that to just restore a bit of shine to this plastic. And once we wipe it off, it's gonna have a really nice look to it. It's gonna kind of conceal some of these surface scratches and make this thing look a little, a little bit better. So this is kind of like the faded half in here. It's just a much deeper black. Does that look gorgeous or what? All right guys, for the final test, I am going to power these up probably off camera um, and set the time and unplug them. And then we'll power them on together. Make sure the clock battery is working so the time and date are saved. And I have about 10 PS2 games in my collection. They're all in really good shape, but I found one game that is all scratched up. And I wanna make sure that both these units, can, if they can read a game like this, then I'm gonna be pretty satisfied with how everything turned out, especially for this guy that's acting up. And I have a PS1 game also pretty scratched up. So we'll see how it's reading PS1 discs as well. So let me set the time on these and uh, then I'll come back. All right, I've set the clock on both these units. So let's fire them up and try some games. Now this guy on the left, this is the cleaner of the two units, the Virgin PS2. Let's turn it on, hit record. Config, and there's the date and time. Perfect. All right, let's try a PS2 game. I have not tried this yet. This is a very badly scratched up disc. Some pretty nasty scratches on that. And the game started up. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's try a PlayStation 1 game. Perfect. Cool, I'm happy with that. Now, just move on to this unit. Power this guy up. I still haven't tested this using any discs after the pot tweak, but I did set the time. And there it is, the battery's working. Cool, let's try a PS2 game. booting right up, awesome. Not only did we fix it, it's reading the worst disc that I have. That's amazing. All right, let's turn this off. Let's try a PS1 game. There it is. And again, that's a really scratched up disc. Awesome. So if I had to guess what happened here, this unit probably stopped reading discs. And as we found out, the issue with both of these was that micro switch, that door sensor in the front. And the previous owner probably Googled online, you know, PlayStation not reading discs, found a thread about tweaking the potentiometer. And that's the first thing he probably tried on this drive. The numbers were way, way, way off. I mean, they were almost half of what they should be, and that's delivering a lot of power to the laser. So I wouldn't surprise if some damage was done in terms of reducing the laser's life, but it's working fine right now. All right, 